G'day everyone, welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me. Today I want to talk to you about a very special turtle called the Manning River Turtle and its conservation program. Manning River turtles are only found in one river system. Now there's a few creeks that they live in at the top of that river system, but they're only found in one little area and that makes their conservation so much more important because if they disappeared and went extinct, they will never be seen again. And they've been on this earth for 85 million years. And dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago. So they've been around since before the time of dinosaurs for such a long time. Manning River turtles are aquatic. They live in the water. The only time they come out of water is when females come onto the land to lay their eggs. But let's go through some of their external features, their physical features. Now they're turtles, so they have a hard shell. And people often ask, what's the difference between a turtle and a tortoise? Now, I like to remember it this way. Let's think about a Galapagos tortoise. It is a land tortoise. It has feet like an elephant and it lives on the land. Now, sea turtles have flippers. That's an easy way to remember it. Tortoise have feet, turtles have flippers. But things like Manning River turtles kind of don't fit between either, but they are called turtles and they do live in the water. And whilst they don't have flippers, their feet are still webbed like a duck. So that's why they're turtles. Some other physical features are how they breathe. They have two little nostrils. They can hold their breath for longer than humans, but they still have to come up and breathe. And the more energy they use underwater, the more often they have to come up and breathe. Now their eyes, their eyesight is quite good. They can see underwater and they've got a little sheath, a little eyelid that comes down so it protects their eye, but they can still see through it, kind of like a crocodile. Now their skin, it might look spiky and scaly, but it's actually quite soft. And that's why they've got that hard shell. If something like a sea eagle picked a turtle up in its talons, the turtle pulls inside its shell and the eagle can't eat it because it's protected and they've got to protect those soft parts of the body. Living underwater, they don't have many predators. Now things like fish, Murray cod or yellow belly perch will eat little baby turtles, but those little babies hide in the reeds. Once you're a big adult turtle and you're underwater, you really don't have many predators. Let's think about it. What could predate a turtle in the water? I know one thing and that's a sea eagle, a fishing eagle. It can come down and swoop a turtle. So they tend to stay on the bottom. And when they come up to breathe for air, they go up in a reedy section where the sea eagle can't see them. Whenever I snorkel, and I snorkel a lot, look for endangered turtles. Whenever I snorkel and I see a big fallen down tree in the water, I always know that's where the turtles will be. So they like to hang around those trees and the stumps and the logs underwater. But that's also where their food washes up. Now, Manning River turtles are omnivorous. That means they eat meat and plant matter. But mostly, they're garbage cleaners of the system. Now that might sound gross, but it's not. They keep the system clean. So let's say Tasmanian devils. They're not really good predators, they're scavengers. So what they do is they use their nose and they smell for carrion, which is an animal that's already died. And the devil cleans that up. Now that animal could have been diseased and the devil gets rid of that disease. Turtles do the same underwater. So whether it's a dead fish, um, they'll clean that up out of the system and it improves the water quality. Also, they like lots of things like figs and fruits that fall into the water, but they are omnivorous. Manning River turtles live in a really specific part of the rivers that they live in. They like the big rocky holes where there's deep water. And in the enormous drought that we just had, the only places you could find turtles were in these big rocky holes. That was their last refuge. That's where they survive. Uh, the rivers are quite fast flowing. They're eastern rivers that flow off the mountain range, off the Great Dividing Range. And so they like nice, clean, fast flowing water. Now I want to talk to you about the Manning River Turtle Conservation Project. My two organisations, the Australian Reptile Park and Aussie Ark, both help this turtle. Now they were classified as endangered a few years ago and their major threats are pollution to the waterways, the erosion of the nest banks. So females have to come up and lay their eggs. But what do you think happens if a cow comes along? It squashes the eggs, it crushes them. 
Next is the feral fox. These turtles for 85 million years never had a feral fox. We didn't have them in Australia. Now, when Europeans brought the fox to Australia, it learned how to hunt turtle eggs. And almost 100% of turtle nests are being eaten by foxes. And the last thing is siltation. Now, siltation is when you've got uh, a cleared paddock. And instead of the water running off when it rains through grass and forest, it runs off a paddock and all the dirt comes with it and that dirt is called silt. And that silt clogs up the waterways. The turtles can't see, they can't breathe, they can't hunt, they can't find their food and it's a really big problem. So Aussie Ark, we've gone out into the wild and we've collected 12 turtles and we've started an insurance population. We think now there's a couple of thousand in the wild, that's it. Just a couple of thousand and their numbers are declining. So we've gone out and we've collected 12 and we've brought them into captivity. And our job is to breed them and get them back into the water. So if we can breed them and hatch the eggs and save those little ones, tiny little turtles, you think the cow can't trample the eggs because we've got them safe. The fox can't eat the eggs because we've got them safe. And if we can get them back in the water, we can really improve the species numbers and play a significant role towards turtle conservation. Homework for today. There are a number of species of freshwater turtle in Australia. I want you to tell me how many species of freshwater turtles there are, okay? Just in Australia. And note that I said freshwater. I'm not talking about sea turtles. How many species of freshwater turtles are there in Australia? And the next thing I want you to do, I want you to find the turtle that lives closest to you. I don't even care if you're in Australia, anywhere in the world. I want you to find a species of turtle that lives somewhere near you. I don't care how far it is. Find one that lives near you. I want you to draw me that turtle, but I want it underwater. And I want you to find out who else lives with it. Is there a species of fish? Is there a species of yabby or crayfish? Are there platypus? Are there other, is there more than one species of turtle? I want a picture of that underwater world. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us and hopefully you. Now, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. But this is what I do, connecting people with nature and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.